God bless you, everybody. Welcome back to KPTV 6280. How are you doing on today? Well, I hope that you are having an amazing day. I have something very important to show you. You know, there are a lot of people that have been withholding information only because they are, they may have been trying to be respectful, probably just shaking their head saying I'm going to stay in my lane and mind my own business. But it comes down to the point that we are elders in the body of Christ and we are supposed to say something when things is out of order, especially to the degree that we are allowing it to happen. I can't misuse this scripture too much because it's in the Bible. And I know I use it a lot, but this is what the Lord said. And maybe he said it because we so guilty in so many ways, the church at large. You know, the Bible says that we let that woman Jezebel preach in his church. Now, that simply means that this spirit is a spirit of control and it is a spirit that causes one to be uh, in adultery or fornication in God, meaning we are betrothed to Christ and uh, we are supposed to be his bride that is going to go to the marriage supper of the lamb. Remember, because if you really think about it, Mary and Joseph was not actually married, but the covenant was there. And in God's eyesight, she was accounted for. That is the reason why if a if a person uh, is found to be uh, not a virgin and did not wait on her bride, then the man could be loose from her. And that is the only way that she could have committed fornication because they're not actually married by the actual covenant, but they are betrothed to one another. So God has given the church to his son, Jesus, as his bride to be. And we are going, we are looking for our what? Bride groom, right? And so for the woman Jezebel to be operating and preaching and prophesying in the church, the Bible said we let it happen. And God is not mad at nobody that stands up against the spirit that is running rapid in the house of God. In fact, if you call yourself sanctified and filled with the whole, safe, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, if you call yourself an elder and someone that has been around and you have sound doctrine and you are recognized as an elder with wisdom, nobody can't rebuke you. Because you are standing on uh, foundation and fundamental principles and you are there as like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. You are there to give advice. You are there to give shelter. You are there to uh, teach the younger generation and the younger women and the younger men. And so, no, you are not supposed to just stay in your lane and sit back and be quiet. I know a lot of people think that you're supposed to do that just to mind your own business. But Jesus said, I was about my father's what business. This is your father's house and this is your father's business. In fact, Jesus didn't like it. So he turned them tables over over and told us or them what the house of God was going to be considered. And so I believe that if Jesus was here right now, he would shut the locks of the, uh, put a padlock on the doors of those churches. And so with that being said, we already seen a video. I think you guys saw the video. I think I shared the video um, before uh, about this woman who had rebuked um the people of God prior to this, she had already done it. And now she's in the limelight again, which is kudos for her. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad it's her. Thank you. 
And I'm glad that she had the platform that she has. Let's take a look at this video. And I'm going to give you scriptural commentary on what God says about what she is saying. Okay. You can't be weird and doing all that crazy stuff. No. Another thing, this is why young folks too. You all stop that mess. Put some socks on. Stop all that foolishness with your ashy ankles. And where that foolishness come from? Y'all quit that mess. I ain't got time. That's foolish. And put some socks on. You a man. Be a man. Stop doing everything you see these sissified folks doing. You stop doing that. This ain't no sissified house. This the house of God. You put some socks on your feet. Amen. And you better not come up in my house with some pearls on your neck. I slap you too. You don't come up here and disgrace God looking like a woman. I ain't playing with y'all today. Sit there talking about you a prophet. No, listen, I'm gonna straighten this out tonight. Talking about with your you a prophet and your hair braided better than my hair. You a man, get them braids out of your head. Get your braids out of your head. You a man, you're not a woman. Go get a haircut. <laughs> Braze all up in your head and got a ponytail. How you got a ponytail and you a man? Where did the ponytail come from? It came from women. Came from women. So their hair all braided up and gonna tell me what thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord to you, go sit down and get right with God. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, you got a lot of people that is going to argue with this woman and they're going to talk about that's, you know, the law and that's just religious, that's judgmental and everything. And if we're going to do away with the Bible, then you could say all of that. But it is actually scriptural. You know, I know that God accepts people the way that they are, but he doesn't lead them the way that they are. You know, when you see all of these people in the church with tattoos all on them, I could understand that you came in the church with a tattoo. But what I can't understand is that you are a preacher and you continue to get your tattoos and you are putting piercings in your nose and you're doing all of this other stuff. And then you got the nerve to try to rebuke other people that are doing things that you should be rebuking. Um, first of all, you could be rebuking what they're doing, but why you can't see that you're not supposed to be having no tats and no piercings all up in your nose and all of this other stuff. Let me just tell you something. Some things are cultural and some things are from where people are from. But when we come to Christ, we are no longer going by our culture to some degree, to most degree. OK, and so she is absolutely 100 percent right. You have people that is designing and I shared this with you years ago. There are people that is designing these clothes and they are not ministers of the gospel. And, and let me just share that with you. There are men that are designing these clothes and they are designing them. I shared this years ago to make a man look effeminate. And so when we see women up there preaching with bodycon dresses on, with these stiletto heels that, you know, just they could barely walk and they could barely preach the word of God and they slinging their hair left and right. And when you see men that are sitting there on the pulpit and they have all of their groins out or their muscles showing, it's just as wrong. Modesty goes for men and modesty goes for women. Now, she talked about this trend that everybody wants to wear a man bun and everybody want to have braids and everybody want to have locks and all of that. And I know that you think that it's all because we black and that's what we supposed to do. We rost us and everything. I'm telling you that we have to do what the Bible says. You know, when you come to God and your culture is something that is counter the word. Who is going to have the last say? It's the word of God. There are a lot of people that their culture, they're Jews and their culture is to do this and do that. When they come to God, they are disowned if they name the name of Jesus. So let's just go uh, for a minute. Let's go 
to the word of God and see what the word, thus said the Lord uh, about that situation. And, and let me just say this. She is absolutely um, 100% correct because um, there is this guy and I cannot remember his name, but he is um, he is um, a coach for women. And I can't think of that guy's name, Stefan or something like that. And he looks very handsome and he has dread all the way down his back. Honey, that man have a beard that is so big. And baby, all of those pastors and preachers started looking at how the women was going crazy behind a man that is not saved. And everybody and their mama started doing what they saw that man doing. And I'm talking about prophets and preachers that got the same Bible that you have, but they will not. They, I mean, how is it that you're going to look past some of these scriptures? So here in this word right here, let's go uh, back a little bit. Let's go back. Now, it says, judge for, for yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? The Bible says the woman hair is her covering, but the man actually is a woman's covering as well. So eat, 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 eat two, two ways, you know, people cover their heads, but it's basically saying the man, a man is the covering for a woman, a man and her hair. The Bible clearly says is her covering. So let's go further. And now we're going to talk about the man. It says. Let's go further. It says, does not nature. Uh, does not the very nature of things teach. And I'm just reading the first one that's up there. Does not the very nature of, of things teach you that if a man has long hair, it is what? Uh, what? Somebody put it in a comment section. If you can see this right here, it is a what? Mm -hmm. Okay, but God, you know, well, no, let's read it. It is a what? Okay, I didn't say it. It was in the Bible already. It is a disgrace for a man to teach or to preach if he has long hair. Now, you may not think this is a big deal. This is in 1 Corinthians, and this is Paul telling you about this. Now, let's go further. The reason that it's dishonorable, is, it even tells you why. If a, But if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. But it ain't to a man glory, for long hair is given to her as a what? A what? Here we go. Her hair is her covering. Okay, let's read on. Now, I want you to hear this. It says, if anyone wants to be contentious about this or argumentative about this, we have no other practices. We don't do nothing else. This is what the church, early church did nor do the church of God. They don't have the church of God, no matter where it is, whether it's in Corinth, whether it's the fueling station or where it, whether it's any other organization, the Bible says, if anyone want to quarrel about this, that we don't practice nothing else but this, neither does the church of God or the churches of God. Because all of the churches all over the world that is adhering to the doctrine of the apostles doctrine and the word, those are God's people, not those that are making things up because it's the fad. OK, so let's go further. And it tells us why. Let me see. In this scripture, it may not tell us because it's different uh, variations or different places. This scripture is this is so crazy how they got all these little 
Okay. Let's see. In the following directives, I have no praise for you. Okay, let's see here. Mm, let me see here. So the reason that the Bible says that a man should not cover his head, because he said if a man covers his head, God is his head of a man, and a man is the head of a woman. So when a woman have hair, that brings honor to men. When a man does not cover his or covers his head with long hair, the Bible says he disgrace and dishonor God. Now, you could prophesy. And I'm trying to go back to see if I could find it for you and you could preach. But the Bible says a man that covers his head while he preach with long hair, he says, it is a disgrace before the Lord. And he is dishonored. He's saying, Jesus, you are not my head. You're not my covering. I won't listen to what you tell me to do. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. Let me see if I can find that for, that part for you. I don't know why this thing keep coming up right here, y'all. Hold on. Let's see. Hmm. And I've shared this with the fueling station before. Let's see here. Give me just a second. You see this thing right here? It's just. Uh, okay. Wow, this is crazy. Okay, just give me just a second. I'm going to share this uh, with you because I like to show the scripture itself, honey. Okay, let's see if I can find the scripture that says. Okay, now look, it says in 1 Corinthians 11 and 7, it says a man ought not to cover his head since he is the image of and the glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. A man should not cover his head. Let's see, for a man, let's read King James. For a man indeed are not cover his head for as much as he is the image of God, but the woman is the glory of man. And then uh, I, I'm not gonna keep going through these little things that's on here. When you look it up, it says, a man that covers his head dishonors God, okay? So I don't care if it is a fad and I don't care if it's a trend. I'm telling you what the Bible says. The Bible says that the word of God is for reproof and for correction. And so people will hear this word, what I'm saying to you right now, and they will rebuke the word instead of letting the word rebuke them and correct them. And so I want you to know that this is error. If you have sons and, and Eliezer want me to lock his hair, I used to do dreads way down to the middle of people back. They wanted it done. But guess what? It doesn't make it right. You know, when I was in a hair uh, business, people would have dreads and uh, I, should, I call them locks. And if they was not saved, then that's one thing. But a man, a woman, a God that's sitting there prophesying and preaching, if God telling you all that stuff, how is it that you don't want to see that part that is in the Bible? It's not far. It's not hard to find. And you know that this is something that has been taught and people just have selective amnesia. OK, let's listen to what else she is saying. Not only did he have each baby, she should have went to the altar and hold his hand and got down and get right with God. You, you sitting up there, got his hair twisted up and the older woman putting on it. 
preach, baby. She should have went to the altar and hold his hand and got on there with her. And you're saying foolish stuff, amen. And not only that, not only did he have <laughs> had hair braided up under the ponytail like that, his hair was black and the braids were blonde. I said, what kind of foolishness is this? And up there making a show, you weren't hearing from God. Wasn't even preaching about nothing. Running across the stage like he, me, or some a woman. Oh, I feel God. That ain't God. That's called flesh. You stand up there like a man and say, Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord to your people. You don't. No, uh uh. And first of all, we need to cut that out. You a man, why is it that the men start to want to look like the women? Why you got to braid your hair up now? Corn rolls all up here and you got a pony. What's up with all of this? And then you tell me that you're not conforming to this world. What else is conforming? We need to stand up. If you don't respect your house, respect God's house. Don't come up in there like that. Don't come in up here like that. You be what God has called you to be. You know, the truth of the matter is people have stopped standing up for what is right. And I'm so happy to hear her say this right now. Um, let me give you um, just a minute. I want to give you the scripture. And it's not just that. It's all kinds of things, you know, and you got bishops that is doing this. OK, um, let's read this scripture right here. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, thus every man who prays, let's highlight this because somehow people don't want to, I mean, we don't want to say what God is saying. Thus, every man who prays or prophesies, prays or prophesy, and prophesy means two things. It means to say, thus saith the Lord in a form of the future, and it also means to preach. So any man, can you think of some that are very famous and they preaching and they praying and they prophesying? Look what the Bible says. Thus, every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonor his head means that every man who covers his head physically dishonor his spiritual head, and that is Christ. The Bible says your head or your covering, Jesus is the covering for the man, and a man is a covering for the woman. So Jesus covers the man, a man covers the woman. The reason that a woman head is covered with her hair or a man, men cover women. That's the reason why we teach our sons to be protectors because they are covering. And this is God ordained. And you know, it got a lot of women that would argue with you about that and be like, ah, you know, nah, nah, nah. well, do you boo? But I'm telling you what the Bible says. I do not have a problem with the man being my covering. Why? Because this is not man-made. This is God-made. This is the way it goes. And so women are um, the weaker vessel. It's so much stuff that done crept into the house of God that is not even godly or biblical. And it is downright sin because the Bible says, if you find that scripture, it says every man that prays or prophesy uh, with his head cover dis honor. That means you show no honor to your head, which is Christ. Huh? So this is a very big deal. And so we have, I, um, let me see if I can find that video. This woman was preaching and she was talking about all of the men that is in the church are now um, walking as effeminates. And so therefore, you know, they are showing you why, why they are doing the things. And a lot of people that just want to be trendy, you take on that spirit. When you start dressing like that, you're not going to realize that you're going to start having 
those tendencies and you and you can't get mad at nobody for mistakenly thinking that you are like that. There's a famous um, preacher and they call him a preacher, but I don't because I mean. People are saying people are of the cloth and they doing it and they saying anything. But anyway, he just so happened to say something and people now there's a scandal out right now about what he was doing in this church. Well, first of all, that wasn't really even if it was legally a church. Half of these churches are literally on paper a business. So if you had a 501c3, a business, well, then that's a church to them. But OK, let's just say what is happening. Basically, he say he have all of the women in his church. And he said that they are all the women are all being with one another. And he said they could preach your socks off. His thing is that he is hoping that pastors will come out and just be honest about their lifestyles because he knows that they are living like that. And he says, I'm just being transparent with you concerning my life. And so Colton Pearson was trying to tell the church that he knows that is doing what they're doing to just be honest as well. So at the end of the day, everybody's not just dressing like this for a fashion. It's because they are um, advertising their lifestyle that is undercover. And it's at the end of the day, God said that you let that woman, Jezebel, let's go there, uh, speak and preach in my church. I'm going to um, let her uh, speak a little bit further. And then we're going to go to the scripture because we want to always stand on what the word is saying. And, you know, one of the things that I believe that people are not reading their Bibles and teleprompters and all of that, and it's almost like, you know, I, you're not responsible for giving me the bulk of the word. I, I'm responsible for getting the bulk of the word. You only give me um, two to three messages a week, most of the time, just two. And, and these messages are watered down and they're not a word from God. They're a word that is going to tickle your fancy and it's going to just cause the flesh to rise and for you to cater to your flesh. And so at the end of the day, People are not standing up to defend the faith anymore. OK, so let's just listen to this. And I'm going to find that scripture because we have to stand on the word of God. When you come up against heresy and error, you have to have the word because anything that they're fighting with, if it ain't the word, it won't last. But we stand with the shield of faith and a sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You be what God has called you to be. And when you stand before God, he ain't going to call you no he, she. Only thing he's going to say to you is, depart from me, he, she. You can't do that. Uh-uh. He, he didn't make no mistake. He know what he made. You either, uh, and don't get mad at me, stop reading the Bible. And then another thing. If you don't want to do the Bible, stop quoting the Bible. Stop picking scriptures out that you want to fit your situation. Stop picking out scriptures to fit. Now, when you get to Romans first chapter, you just skip all of that. When you go back to Deuteronomy and Genesis, you just skip all of that. But you want to pick up scriptures like, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. No, you're righteous with Christ Jesus if you live right. A lot of old folks are going to give an account for how you encouraging these men and women. Now, again, we want young people to follow our footsteps. We want that. But we need to teach you how to follow it right. When we were coming up, you know what? I'm sorry, y'all. When we were coming up, we didn't have a lot of uh, homosexuals like they have today. We didn't have a lot of that. Because them old folks, wasn't, they just wasn't putting up with it. You come in the house, they would tell those young men, and if they saw some, uh, as Mother Price says, some neutral sweet in them, they make you get it out of you. They say, uh 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 uh, straighten that walk up. You are and you know what? The thing about it, she's not lying because uh, what's his name that sings real good? He says, 
BB changed his life. Uh, what's his name? He was seen uh, with Yolanda Adams and um, Kurt Franklin in concerts. But basically, he was saying that he went through a phase in his life that uh, he was living that lifestyle. He said, but when he met CC or BB, he said, uh, Donnie McClurkin, he said that changed his life. OK. And they made him uh, live right and live holy. And so that is why we are here. You know, a lot of times. And, and let me just say this. The Lord gave me a word. Um, I, it's going to be uploading, um, probably today or tomorrow, but, and, and the Lord say promotion is here, but this is what the Lord said. And I'm not going to tell you everything. God said that if there is something that is being withheld from you, it's not because I'm withholding it from you. It's because there are things that you won't change and you could have the blessing. The blessing is contingent upon us changing. And so let me just um, give you this scripture right here. Let's, let's take a look at this scripture. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I could find it somewhere else because I'm having a problem with all of that stuff getting on the screen. Uh, hold on. Okay, here we go. It says, and I'm going to read the, I'm just going to go through. This is sad, sad, sad. Okay. And that's a Christian uh, Bible uh, app. That's what some of them Bible apps is demonic. Let me just say that. Just be, uh, uh, operate with cautious. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Where is this part of the scripture? Because I want. OK, so it says right here, Jesus is walking through the church and this is John on the island of Patmos. And God is showing him what Jesus is saying in in the future. Jesus was saying this, what he was seeing then and what is a revelation. Revelation is the testimony or what Jesus said. OK, so Jesus is telling you what is what it is. I'm going to say it like that. When we give a testimony, it's, it's what we testified about, what we saw and what we heard. And so revelation is the testimony of Jesus. So, you know, here, here we go. He says, I know your deeds, your, uh, your love and your faith. Um, he says, and your service and your perseverance. And he says, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. People don't understand that God wants us to do more than we did when we first got saved. Some of us have slacked off and we say we just coasting just till we get to the finish line. OK, you go on head on with your bad self. That is not the will of God. We are supposed to be more fervent and more on fire. We are supposed to be praying more. We're supposed to be giving more. We're supposed to be doing more. So Jesus said himself, somehow we don't even idolize what Jesus say anymore. Or we let it be dumbed down. Or we let it be uh, taken and put it on a back shelf. He said that you are now doing more than you did at first. So God forgive us if we're not. We need to do, do that because we're trying to get to the point where Jezebel came up in the house and started teaching you. It's OK. You ain't got to do all that. He said, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate the woman, that woman, that woman, which is the spirit who calls herself a what? Prophet. This woman is talking about this prophet who is sashaying, sashaying himself on a stage saying he got a word from God. He got a word from God. Guess what? Everybody is a prophet today and everybody got a word from God, but they ain't got a life to match the word. They ain't got a word. They got something that is going to tickle your fancy. The Bible say they want to whitewash the wall and they want to paint the graves and in the inside is dead men bones. They ain't got a word. God ain't speaking to these people, but they want to run and they, they know how to perform. That's the reason why when you see kids on social media and they know how to perform, that's them children that grew up and they performing. 
They know how to holler on the mic. They know when to pause. They know when to scream. They know when to run. They know when to take they, they uh, press shawl and throw it over somebody. They know when to jump up on a chair. See, all this is theatrics. Nothing wrong with the Holy Ghost and the anointing, but you could tell the difference. He says, I have something against you. Who is he talking to? Who makes up the church? We do. So when we God speed and don't say nothing about this diabolical evil, we're letting it happen. He said, I have something against you. You tolerate or put up with that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. But her but her teachings by her teachings, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food that is sacrificed to idols. In other words, he's basically saying she's teaching them to dishonor God and go after other gods. Because immorality is that we are Jesus's bride. And as you teach them to do uh, evils, and he's relating that to go after other gods and sacrificing idols to idols, he's basically telling you that she's teaching you um, how to be adulterous and paganistic. Because when you are adulterous, you are committing fornication on Jesus, so to say. And when you are sacrilegious or uh, what's the word for idolatry? I forgot that word. Not idolatrous, but it's another uh, word. When you are doing that, you're still worshiping another God. So that is what she is teaching you how to do. People will rebuke you for teaching you how not to worship the idols of this day, like they were worshiping the idols of that day. And actually, when a, when a pastor or a man or woman of God is teaching you to put away idolatry, idolatry is immorality. And it is it is you being uh, with another God. And it's immorality. So instead of teaching you not to do it, Jezebel is teaching you to do it. And so today you got people fighting you because you're teaching them not to commit fornication and immorality and worshiping the idols and of our day. They'll argue you down for that. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. And they'll go find somebody that'll make it easy for people to um, you be adulterous or commit fornication on the Lord and Savior in the sense of that word. That's he, Jesus. God used that word uh, in, in the entire Bible to demonstrate to you that Israel would always go a whoring. If he didn't want to use that word in a sexual way to depict what that meant then he wouldn't have used it. So I'm only using that word because that's what he said, that the church or Israel was going a whoring. And so when he talks about uh, sexual immorality, that is the way John is saying it. But God is talking about the church going after other gods in his house and saying they're the bride of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. That means this spirit that is sashaying itself around in the house of God, it is not there to hear a rebuke. It is there to take over. That is the reason why a child of God should never apologize for being on fire for the Lord and a child of God should never apologize for standing up for what is right because I'm seeing evil done and there is no shame at all and things that should have been kept in a closet is now being put on full display and you got Christians that is following people that they so say love that is secular and they are Christians and they are pastors and they're setting the standard. In other words, they're teaching you all of those pastors that is doing Beyonce walking out on a stage and 
bringing a Super Bowl in a church. Y'all saw that? A pastor brought the Super Bowl in a church where he's sitting on a big balloon going all across the stage. Um, new video where Mike Todd's is kicking the Bible and pouring all kind of stuff on the Bible and all of this stuff. Well, I don't think he kicked the Bible. He poured serve and stuff. But there was another lady that just kicked the Bible. Honey, they telling you the Bible is not important. That is the devil. And the devil is showing you that they are being used. And this is the reason why we ask God to use us, because if we do not open up our mouth and be used by God and stand up and say no to evil, then those devils are definitely using people that are agents of the dark. OK, I don't want to make this a long video. I'm going to stop right there. And I just want us to take the time to say no to what is wrong. You know, we stand for what is right, but we have to say no to it. We have to say yes to God and no to the things of this world. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come against this diabolical evil that is coming in the earth. We come against all of this stuff that is coming in the earth or coming in the church. And there is no voices that are hardly saying anything about it. But Lord, people are getting tired and people are being raised up to speak truth to error. And God, I pray God's speed and your divine protection and covering over each and every one of us that are not going to blend in with the madness that is going on. God, let there be a remnant that will continue to teach our children and the future generation for what is right. I ask that those that are young, that they would have discernment to know that that is evil and that is not the ways of God. I ask that what the woman of God said will not be considered an argument because Paul said in the word that if any one person want to be contentious uh, or quarrelsome or want to have an attitude then he said that this has never been a practice that has been accepted in the church. And he said, neither has it ever been accepted in the churches of God. And God, we are still your body. And we are going to hold on to the fundamentals of the gospel. And we are going to go on to completion and perfection. No, we are not accepting anything. We're not letting down the standards. And I just pray that the fueling station will be that generation that you said that we are. We are generation that is not for sale.